Hey, how are you? I'm Slice of Otaku, and we are currently up to chapter 249 of My Hero Academia, and we are still in the setup phase of this current arc, but things are mounting up and getting a little interesting. So far, it has been a week since Bakugo, Deku, and Shoto have been under Endeavor's tutelage and his hero agency, and they are still really eager to get better and improve, to the point where they are visibly beaten and battered a bit in their gear, but their spirit has not wavered at all, and they are eager to get out there and succeed in what Endeavor has told them to do. And I gotta say, it is really fun to see these three have their personalities bounce off of each other and just banter because they are all so different. I mean, Deku is eager, he's intelligent, and he overanalyzes everything. Bakugo, as we know, is a hothead and gets crazy and is very aggressive with anything he says. And Shoto, Shoto is very much like his quirk. He is simultaneously sort of cold in his wording, but his words have a warmth behind them. And this dynamic between the three of them really just makes for some comedic moments. Like, Bakugo is surprisingly really, really funny to me lately. Like, in these few chapters, he has been hilarious. This one especially. But besides these three, we have one of Endeavor's protégés, Burnin. And I like her. She is really just a fun design. I want more of her. Hopefully, we get to uh, see more from her in the future, get to see her in combat, something like that because she seems to be a very charming character who is really just looking out for these uh, these three protégés. And I, I guess she's passionate. She seems to have a fire aspect about her and around her, and hopefully we get to see more about her. In the previous chapter, we got a look at our boys going into the streets with Endeavor and just getting some guidance from him. It wasn't too crazy, uh, but we did get to see a bit of what they're dealing with. But yeah, that last chapter, the first page of that last chapter baited me so hard because I saw Uraraka, I saw Suyu, I saw Nejide, and I saw the dragon hero, the number 10 dragon hero, Ryuka, whatever her name is. And I got excited. I thought we were going to get to uh, see their perspective, go and do that, but it didn't happen. And we just went back to the three boys in a pretty mundane chapter. We got to see them in the streets, but it was just... It wasn't what I hoped it would be, which it happens, but whatever. Now, the latest chapter wasn't too focused on Endeavor's hero agency, and instead, the Todoroki family dinner, which we got to attend, which was pretty awkward. And honestly, my hat goes off to uh, Horikoshi, but not really, uh, because his paneling was on point. Like, he made you feel the awkward sensation of that conversation. And the fact that the uh, the word bubbles, the speech bubbles, overlapped each other when they were talking, and just all the pauses and awkward silences, the facial expressions of Todoroki's siblings and Todoroki himself and Bakugo and Deku trying to enjoy their meal, it was just... <laughs> it was unnerving. And I really like it, and I... Gotta say, Horikoshi really did the damn thing when it came to paneling this chapter. Now, previously I said we don't know much about Shoto's big sister, Fuyumi, but now I know that she is an angel. She is so nice. Like, she is just trying to put on for her family and bring them back together. When she herself dealt with things, she herself uh, dealt with her father, uh, just as they have. Not exactly as much as Shoto, but you get the point. Uh, and she just wants them to reunite and be together. And so she put on this big dinner and just got them in the same room somehow. But she did it. Uh, and yeah, she's, she's just really, really nice and very apologetic, very humble, very uh, hospitable. But at the same time... For me, when characters seem a little too nice despite having trauma, I expect there to be a different side to her or, or something that we have yet to see. Because there is no way that she went through the same thing and just is let, letting bygones be bygones. There's no way it's that easy. We have to have something about her character. Or we don't, and she's just a mediator between her family. That's fair too. But I, I like some broken characters, and hopefully she has a bit more in the back. 
And once again, to reiterate a previous point, Endeavor is someone that is really hard or is going to be really hard for me to forgive. I mean, he is definitely showing that he wants to gain his family's trust again and have them all together again. But he realizes that he's the problem and they can be happy if he's not there, but he wants to be there. He wants to rekindle or well, there was nothing there to begin with. So he just wants a happy family now. And it's a bit late. It's a bit down the road. I mean, you have adult children now and one of them is gone now. So your decision to be better is a bit late, but I don't know. It, it, this is really weird. And I, I once again wonder what the hell Horikoshi is going to do with his character. Uh, what can he possibly do to make Endeavor redeemable? Because this dude already got slashed in the face by a Nomu, a high tier Nomu. He got beat up and battered bloody uh, and it was on the news. So how much further can you go? It, they said that Shoto is a sort of open to the concept of accepting him again and just letting things work out between them. And I want to get an elaboration on that. Like, why are you now cool with it? Have you just are you just that big of a person now? Cannot entirely relate, <laughs> but I, I get it. You, you know, he's your parent. You want to have some sort of relationship with him. It may be hard, but he's a hero, so he does hard things. But obviously, Shoto is not the only one he needs to prove himself to because Natsu is not having it. Natsu doesn't want anything to do with him. And just the the thought of eating near him just upset his stomach. He couldn't do it. Um, and hopefully, if, if not forgiveness, hopefully Natsu and the entire Todoroki family can find solace in themselves and be together again, if not with Endeavor, uh, with each other. Seems like their mom is on the road to recovery, so hopefully she can join that as well. But the real meat and potatoes of this chapter was Toya. Toya, the dead son. Uh, and <laughs> like I said, I don't care about Dobby much anymore. So if they want to say, oh, it was Dobby all along, good for them. Uh, hopefully it can be more interesting than just that plain and simple because it's been said so many times that it's sort of numb on me. I mean, I'm excited to see how our characters may uh, react to that sort of thing, but <sighs> predictability in manga kind of just makes things a bit dry and not as exciting. I mean, even when in Naruto, we knew who the masked man was uh, for a long time, there was speculation that was pretty dead on. Uh, there was still that air of doubt. There was still the other possibilities, the wild card possibilities, but there were still possibilities nonetheless. And it feels like Dobby doesn't really have any competition in terms of what may have happened to Toya. Like it ju it's just a one to one. He has fire. He has similar hair. He's gotta be, right? Shoto had a close encounter with him. Endeavor had a close encounter with him. He's gotta be him, right? It's, it, I mean, I'm just kind of tired of it. And we keep getting these teases of Dobby. We get close to Dobby origins, Dobby's whole backstory. I mean, we got the whole League of Villains backstory, essentially, except for this man. And it's just like, do it already. Just tell me, God damn, I'm tired of waiting. At this point, I'm indifferent to whether or not uh, he is Dobby, Toya is Dobby, or Dobby is Toya. But I really hope that there is a twist to it. There is some intrigue to it. Maybe, uh, man, I don't even want to speculate too far because it just gets into the realm of ridiculousness and nothing is backed by any source material, it's just your wild imagination and going off of these little breadcrumbs. So 
give me something substantial, and then we can talk. But all in all, I enjoyed this chapter. It was comedic, it was tense, and it was interesting. Hopefully, we're nearing the actual, like, crazy bits of this arc, and we get either revelations, fights, power-ups. I want it all. Hopefully, we get some of it really soon. And hopefully you enjoyed the video and plan on sticking around with us for more My Hero Academia content, whether that be the anime, the manga, or everything in between. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.